G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and today we are going to have another crack at the power rankings. For the uninitiated, the power rankings is an attempt at constructing a bit of a form ranking with a particular focus on the last five rounds and more or less trying to construct a ladder based on the current level of form that each team has. I do this most weeks, sometimes I miss and this week we're going to do one ahead of around 17. So without further ado, let's crack into it. So as usual, I will start with the bottom three teams and for I don't know how many rounds in a row, the bottom three teams are going to stay the same for me and more or less in the same order. So West Coast firmly rooted to the bottom of the rankings uh, in more ways than one. West Coast are the only team to go 0-5 from the last five games and in particular have been disappointing in four of them with one honourable loss against Essendon. Um, by far and away the worst team on form in the competition. And as an Eagles fan, I'm hoping that changes. Uh, nonetheless, Richmond and North Melbourne have won one each from the last five games. And I think North Melbourne in particular have shown some uh, really encouraging form. So they understandably take the 16th spot with one win over the Eagles. The Richmond have beaten the Crows in the last five. And uh, yeah, I think that's probably reflective of where the teams are at. And it's interesting still, it is flipped from the actual ranking on the ladder. So we'll see how the ladder ends up at the end of the season. In the next group of two teams, these two teams are the teams I've sort of grouped together many weeks in a row now, Adelaide and St Kilda. And I've got Adelaide just leapfrogging out of the bottom four ahead of the Saints based on their win on the weekend. So they had a pretty good win at home against the Giants and another win over West Coast in their last five. So many teams, for the record, have gone two and three in their last five. And these two teams are included with the Saints having beaten the Suns and the Eagles in their last five and lost a pretty... Average game to the power on the weekend. So St Kilda back into my bottom four. Adelaide with a win just ahead of them. Next, I'm going to group three teams we might have considered were contenders, so at least by round seven of this season. We've got Melbourne in 13th, Port Adelaide in 12th, Geelong in 11th. So let's go through them individually. Melbourne and the power share something in common. In the last five games, their only two wins have been over North Melbourne and St Kilda. The power have most recently come off a win and Melbourne got very close to a uh, Brisbane Lions side that is quality at the moment. So it's a little bit hard to split those two teams. It was pretty close when they met earlier this year, but we're a bit removed from that, aren't we? Both the power and the Ds have been disappointing in the last five, in my opinion, in terms of the way that they've played. I think Melbourne's performances have been slightly more concerning and that's saying a lot uh, for two teams we expected more of this season. Geelong had a good win over Essendon who were third on the ladder at the time and have won two of their last five with the other win being over Richmond and lost to some decent teams around that. They lost to the Blues, the Swans and the Giants in the last five and on the recency bias their most recent win puts them ahead of the other two teams, justifiably so in my opinion. So then I've grouped the next three teams together. Again, all of these teams have won two of their last five. It's a weird middle part of the ladder this season. I keep saying that. I've got the Gi Giants down in 10th. Their most recent performance was a loss to the Crows in Adelaide, and their two wins have been over the Power and the Cats. They've also lost to Sydney and Hawthorne in that time, and from the eye test have been a little bit disappointing. Essendon is one spot ahead of them. Their two wins in the last five games have been against West Coast and Richmond, so it's hard to give them a lot of credit for that, considering how poor those two teams. In fact, the 17th and 18th on this very power ranking. Their losses haven't been shambolic, in my opinion. I think the Cats' loss on the weekend, going down by about six goals, was disappointing, consider, considering the form lines of both of those teams going into it. We know the Cats do tend to play well against Essendon, but regardless, I think in the last five, Essendon's form is waning a little bit. It doesn't mean they're going to miss finals or whatever. Their other two losses were against the Suns and the Blues, um, which are not shameful losses by any stretch but I do have the Suns just leapfrogging them for two reasons. They, in their last five, one of their wins was a win over Essendon. And furthermore, they just beat Pies, which is a, a pretty good effort. So again, so the recency bias, the most recent win, probably just leapfrogs a very difficult group of teams that's hard to separate at the moment. Gold Coast losses have been against the Dockers in Perth, St Kilda in Melbourne, and the Blues in Melbourne as well. Again, this is not necessarily a prediction of the latter or anything like that. Uh, I don't necessarily think Gold Coast will finish higher than Essendon, but on current form, they probably just slightly edge them. Gross. So then we've got another interesting group of three teams, and uh, I've got, in this order, Collingwood in seventh, the Western Bulldogs in sixth, and now Fremantle up in fifth spot. So let's unpack this. Collingwood's last five has been a little bit shaky. We know that they've probably dealing with some synergy issues with some players coming back after a pretty good sustained run of form. It's just dipped in the last few weeks. So they have two wins over North Melbourne and Melbourne, two not great sides. 
probably a little bit disrespectful to the form North Melbourne's in, but you know what I mean in terms of giving them credit for wins. Those probably don't rate too highly at the moment. They did lose to the Suns away. That is a tough opponent on their home ground. We know that from the data this year. They also lost to the Western Bulldogs, which justifies the dogs leapfrogging them. They also drew with Fremantle away in Perth, which is a rock solid result. So have the Bulldogs up in six. They've won three of their last five, most recently against North Melbourne. They've also beaten the Pies and Fremantle in that time. Their two losses were against the Lions and the Swans, and the Lions and the Swans are probably two of the best sides of the competition right now, or at least close to. We'll get to that. Even if you extend it to the last six, there's a win over the Giants in Sydney in there. It doesn't have to rigidly be the last five. So their form line has been pretty good, it has to be said. I thought they were disappointing against the Lions at Marvel Stadium, but around that, they have been pretty damn good. And I don't have them above Fremantle, despite the fact that Fremantle lost to them heavily in Melbourne. Let's talk about Fremantle now. They've only dropped six points out of their last 20. So that's three wins, one loss and a draw in that time. The draw against Collingwood, of course, in Perth, and one really disappointing loss against the Western Bulldogs. But around that, there's a 100-point win over the Demons, or close enough to. They've just beaten the Swans in Sydney. You have to give them credit for that. You have to move them up the rankings for that. And Fremantle are this hard team to pick where they can play really well against any opposition at any ground in Australia. It's just the consistency piece that we know is the issue with Fremantle and they are a young side. But credit where it's due, that win balloons them up into fifth spot despite the fact they lost to the Western Bulldogs. Then I've grouped the four teams above them in this order. I've got Hawthorne in fourth, which is actually moving up a spot. They are one of two teams to be 5-0 in their last five. I've got them moving up one spot, like I said, but I didn't feel comfortable making it too much higher than that because of the terrible opposition that they butchered on the weekend. Nonetheless, they're definitely one of the form sides of the competition. And I've got the Brisbane Lions slightly ahead of them with 4-1. and one. Now, you could make the argument the Hawks should be higher then the Lions, because the Hawks had a win over the Brisbane Lions in that run of five. But I think Brisbane's form has been slightly more compelling. Like they absolutely butchered the power in Adelaide, and that was actually a fixture that Hawthorne lost. They beat the Saints, they beat the Dogs uh, convincingly in Melbourne, and the Dogs, like I said, have been going all right. Then on the weekend, they got seriously challenged by an improved Melbourne performance. In my opinion, I just think from the eye test, Brisbane are a little bit stronger than Hawthorne at the moment. Or at least because Hawthorne's coming from further back, I find it harder and I need more evidence to leapfrog Hawthorne above them. But I could see why people disagree with that one. And then I've still got the same top two. Carlton, again, the other side, other than Hawthorne, to go 5-0 and in their last five, with their most recent win over Richmond being 70 points. We expect them to be at Richmond, so that doesn't really move the needle up to any extent. And Sydney, again, they've dropped their most recent game, but I still think the gap was still there. It was significant enough for Sydney to have some breathing space and have a little bit of a safety net. One loss to Fremantle at home. It's a blip in the radar at the moment, but there's no real form line to suggest that they're not still the best team in the competition. They have beaten the Giants, the Crows, the Cats and the Dogs in their last five. And, you know, prior to that recent loss, they were three games ahead clear on the top of the ladder with a percentage of nearly 150%. So I still think the gap is there. It doesn't mean that Sydney won't drop if they keep losing games. But I wouldn't feel good about having Sydney any, anything other than the best team in the competition right now. But the gap is tightening a little bit. Carlton looking good. Brisbane are coming hard. I think if Brisbane win their next game and other results fall their way, they'll be back into fifth position. And God knows about Hawthorne. Like they're still, well, they're actually the first team ever to be 13th or lower with a positive win-loss record. It just speaks to the, the weirdness of this season and probably reflects Hawthorne's poor percentage to start the year. They got a little bit back against West Coast, but it'll be a big test for Hawthorne to play at GMHBA this weekend. I'm excited to see how they go there. There's not a lot of data on how they play that ground. I think they played there in 2020, but things are different. Things are different. They are one of the better sides on current form in the competition right now, and you'd think, they, you'd think at this point they get the chocolates. But anyway, guys, that is my attempt at a power rankings for this week. As always, I welcome your input in the comments section below. Should be streaming this weekend i currently intend to stream the melbourne west coast game which is on at 4 a.m here in the uk this weekend so come say good day if you are the sort of person who likes watch alongs but for now i look forward to your input and i'll see you in the next video cheers